In uh, today's lecture, we will talk about the mass spectrometry. We will not talk about the mass spectroscopy. Now, what is the very logic behind? Very simple logic. Just concentrate. Spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? When electromagnetic radiation interacts with the matter is called spectroscopy. And in our this entire discussion, you will never hear the term electromagnetic radiation. So due to which this particular technique is known as mass spectrometry. I think it's okay now. The next point is definition. How will we define the mass spectrometry? Again, very simple. It is an analytical technique in which a sample is taken and that sample is isolated on the basis of mass into charge ratio. And uh, this can be written as M by E or M by Z. So it means on the basis of mass to charge ratio, we just isolate our sample. Now, why do we isolate our sample? We have certain reasons behind. If you want to do the isotopic analysis, we have to isolate our sample because we want to find different isotopes. You know, isotopes have same atomic number but different mass number. So in order to identify or know about different masses, we are supposed to isolate our sample. And uh, sometimes we want to know the structural identification that what kind of the structure the particular molecule has. So for that, we have to break it into different components or fragments. And if you want to calculate the exact mass or relative abundance, again, we are supposed to isolate our sample in the basis of mass to charge ratio. And the next thing that I want to mention here is that if somewhere you are asked to write the uses of the mass spectrometry, so these uh, you can use these points as uses. And the very next point is the principle of mass spectrometry. Now, this is the real point that uh, in the entire spectroscopy and spectrometry, our students are confused. And I remember myself when I was studying this in my student life, I was supposed to be confused by this principle and uh, the theory of the working. So the confused principle that is provided from the mentors is that it is a, a mass spectrometer which generates the multiple ions from the sample and then separate them according to mass charge ratio blah 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 i don't want to confuse you anymore again about this confusing principle which is provided by different mentors to the different students and the principle that i'm going to tell you right now is going to be very logical and to the point whenever either it is spectroscopy or spectrometry if you are asked about the principle you have to focus the sample what is going to happen with your sample that will become your principle of the particular technique so now in this technique we just take our sample we are actually taking our sample we are isolating our sample first thing is isolation second thing we are isolating this on the basis of mass to charge the first thing is separation another thing is charge so charge will come after the ionization of the sample and the separation will come when you split when you fragmentize when you take your sample and when you break into it into fragments so two things are here that will make your principle the very first thing is ionization second one is fragmentation and remember this principle is actually the foundation of the entire system that you are going to study so in short what is the principle of our this technique that is ionization and fragmentation and we will explain this our technique in the working first let us know about the instrumentation of the mass spectrometry so in the instrumentation we have sample inlet vaporization chamber ionization chamber electric field chamber mass analyzer chamber detector recorder and uh, now let's come towards the very point that is working we will take a sample and we will pour that sample through the sample inlet into the vaporization chamber here our sample will be vaporized and again very important point you must keep in mind our sample must be in the gaseous form so if we have any kind of a sample we have we're supposed to convert that sample into gaseous then we will pour that sample through the sample inlet into the vaporization chamber here our sample will be vaporized after the vaporization here we have a slit from which our sample will be entered here we have a slit okay here are is the slit slit that is having I'm just uh, mentioning that the slits, okay, the holes of the slits. Well, after the vaporization of the sample, our sample will be introduced into the another chamber known as ionization chamber. In this chamber, as the name indicates, ionization will happen. So here is our sample. And from here, we have electron gun from where we will fire the electrons on this particular 
sample and you know when you fire electron on a sample this electron will knock the electron from this particular sample and you also know that when any particular element is uh, removing any electron positive charge will appear on that particular element so here on this particular sample what will happen a positive charge will appear why because an electron will be removed by the electrons from the electron gun the first thing is clear now ionization because our sample is now ionized second thing is that our sample may split into several components or fragments so two things happened ionization and fragmentation the very thing that we were supposed to know about and the next portion that you see in the ionization chamber is an electron collector the electron that are coming from the electron gun will be collected here in the electron collector and what next happens is the ions will move into a next chamber that is electric field chamber here the electric field will accelerate because this chamber is acting as an accelerator this will accelerate our ions then the ions will enter to the next chamber noun is mass analyzer chamber here we have our mass analyzers we do have different types of mass analyzers and one of the mass analyzers is uh, magnetic analyzer that we are using here in this technique so this magnetic analyzer will separate our these ions on the basis of mass to charge ratio and we have different types of ions having different types of masses so the one of a lighter mass will be deflected much by this magnetic analyzer and the one having heavy mass will be deflected less and this you can understand this from a simple analogy take a tennis ball and a football kick both after you kick you will observe the tennis ball will move far as compared to the football which is of large size the reason behind is that the reason behind is the particular force the force on the lighter bodies will move them very far so here this magnetic field of this magnetic analyzer will deflect this lighter weight ion more as compared to high weight ion here in the beginning point the detector will detect the ions of low mass and a little bit far the detector will detect the ions of the higher mass so like this our detector will detect uh, ions of different masses so like this our analyzer is separating our ions of different masses and detector is detecting the ions of different masses after detection the recorder will detect record this detected data and then we will get the spectrum now this spectrum on which the x-axis we have mass to charge ratio and on the y-axis we have the intensity or you can say relative abundance of the particular element present in that sample so now you can see different types of peaks these large large peaks represents the fragments of the molecule you had a molecule that molecule was broken into fragments so these are the fragments of the molecule and these small small peaks they are actually representing the isotopes of particular element if any element has isotopes that will be showing somehow small small peaks also and uh, the very first peak that you see here is uh, with the 400 mass to charge ratio now remember these values i have just written these uh, randomly because this is not the spectrum of a particular or of a specific sample this is just a general spectrum so in this spectrum the very first peak that you see with the 400 mass to charge or with the highest mass to charge ratio is actually of the molecule and it is known as molecular peak and this is the peak that is of an uh, element which is of relatively higher abundance it is showing much intensity as compared to others and the rest peak show the rest of the elements present and their relative abundance in the molecule and this one the, the one that is having the maximum intensity is known as the base peak base peak molecular peak and thus we have another peaks and now we will take this spectrum we'll compare this spectrum with all ready available spectrum after the comparison we will come to know what kind of molecule we were doing the study of or what type of molecule was under our investigation in the entire technique so we can know different things after comparison comparing our this spectrum with already available spectrum we can know different things and we can do different analysis so we can do the analysis like uh, isotopic analysis we can come to know the structure identification of and we can also know about the exact mass and uh, also the relative abundance so that's a little bit from my side about the mass spectrometry not the mass spectroscopy and if still you have any kind of question about this topic you can drop that in the comment box welcome for the answers very soon thank you for watching